March 11th will be one year since I stepped foot onto the Appalachian Trail for the very first time. The memories that I have on trail are so, so precious to me. I've had a few people ask me if I was going to do a documentary of my Appalachian Trail through hike. And while I won't be doing one of those, I wanted to share with you an article that a friend of mine wrote for our local newspaper. Her name is Pam Clifton, and she writes for the Daily Journal, our local newspaper. I will include some pictures that you may or may not have seen before from my hike, and I hope you enjoy her article. It was a labor of love, and I really appreciate her writing it. If you'd like to see the story for yourself, you can get that link in the description box below. Thank you again to everyone who has subscribed to me, who followed me on my journey, who continues to send me well wishes. I really appreciate it. And like I say in the article, the trail community is such an abundant blessing to my life. Thank you. Gibson perseveres to accomplish dream. Every great dream begins with a dreamer and Audrey Gibson is definitely a dreamer. Gibson was inspired to attempt a hike along the Appalachian Trail after watching the movie Wild starring Reese Witherspoon. In the movie, Witherspoon's character completes a through hike of the Pacific Crest Trail. The movie inspired Gibson to research through hiking, something she knew nothing about. She soon discovered a through hike was when an individual walks the entirety of a long distance hiking trail from one end to the other. After hours of researching and watching videos, Gibson was especially intrigued with the Appalachian Trail. In fact, she couldn't stop thinking about doing it herself. She researched about the best hiking gear and why people chose it, what people ate along the trail, and other information. She created a gear list and began ordering everything. Gibson soon realized her dream was going to be expensive, specifically, Lightweight camping gear is costly. Already a frugal spender, Gibson had been saving money since 2020. She is an elementary school teacher and had been working every day at her school's after school program. According to Gibson, most websites suggest hikers should budget $1,000 per month while hiking on trail. This included the cost of gear, traveling to and from and staying in towns, resupplying food, showers, laundry, and other expenses. I began to visualize myself hiking the trail, she said. I daydreamed about what it would be like. I started planning in my mind. Gibson's best friend texted her and asked a very direct question. What do you have to prove? At the time, Gibson did not feel as if she had anything to prove. She couldn't come up with an answer for her friend. At the time, she didn't really feel like she had anything to prove. But was she seeking an adventure? Did she need an escape? Maybe deep down I did need to prove something to myself or to others. Gibson arranged to take time off from her job and planned her own through hike for 2020. COVID-19 quickly derailed her, her plans. But Gibson did not stop dreaming. The pandemic only postponed her dream. She continued to nurture that dream. She occasionally enjoyed short day hikes on the weekends to exercise her legs and test out carrying her gear. These day hikes range from one to six miles in length, with her longest at about 10 miles at Bell Mountain. She practiced setting up and sleeping in her tent in her backyard. Though she'd grown up camping with her family, she considered herself a novice backpacker. But this did not scare or worry her. She was at peace with knowing once she got out on the trail, everything would work out. She felt calm and confident that she'd figure out the details as she hiked. Gibson's dream for an unforgettable adventure finally became a reality when she flew from St. Louis to Atlanta on March 11, 2023. From there, she took an Uber to Amicalola Falls State Park in Dawsonsville, Georgia, and then hiked eight miles to Springer Mountain, the southern terminus of the Appalachian Trail. Tourists often climb the 604 steps to the top of the 729-foot falls to enjoy scenic views. Gibson arrived on a Saturday, and the area was bustling with people. The anxious thru-hikers starting at the falls stick out like a sore thumb, she said. Here, you are, a to Here, you are at a tourist destination with a giant 40-pound backpack trying your hardest not to die going up the stairs. 
while day, while day hikers are prancing around taking selfies with fanny packs at most. I was quite the sight. Many tourists asked Gibson what she was doing and wished her well on her trek. According to Gibson, March is a common time to begin an Appalachian Trail through hike. When she started her hike in Georgia, there were many people already on the trail. They all camped near the same shelters, so she was generally around others at night. Then Gibson hiked primarily by herself for the initial 700 miles before she met Stairmaster, a hiker from New York. They both planned to complete their hikes in early August, so they ended up hiking together and became great friends. Before she started her journey, Gibson decided to, to vlog her experience. Her daily routine consisted of waking up, eating, taking down camp, packing her pack, hiking, setting up camp, editing videos, and sleeping. When it was time to sleep, Gibson camped in her Big Agnes Fly Creek UL2 tent while on trail. This tent weighed only two pounds. As a through hiker, she was constantly eating to fuel her body. Her diet depended on what she was craving. If I had to describe what a typical resupply looked like, it would be giving a child $20 in a gas station to get whatever they want, she said. Her mindset for food changed on her journey. She went from eating mostly healthy items like fruits and vegetables every day to consuming prepackaged processed food. She opted for the highest calorie food options like oatmeal, honey buns, tuna packets, chips, candy, mashed potatoes, ramen noodles, nor rice and pasta sides, pepperoni, tortillas, pop-tarts, nutty buddies, beef jerky, nuts, crackers, macaroni and cheese, and freeze-dried meals. A hiker can be as healthy as they like, she explained, but what you have to keep in mind is that whatever you buy, you have to carry. Fruits and vegetables are heavy and don't keep well on hot, humid days. Prepackaged processed food is lightweight. Freeze-dried meals are also very light, but can be expensive. How often Gibson resupplied her food depended on how far away the next town was to her current location. She usually purchased enough food for three to four days. The 100-mile wilderness in Maine was her longest food carry. Gibson stayed at a hotel or hostel at least once a week so she could shower, do laundry, and charge her electronics for the next stretch of her journey. While the trail did challenge her physically, Gibson's busy... Gibson's biggest obstacles were mental and emotional. There were times when she wanted to stop her trek and return home. One particularly difficult time was after she stopped for the evening after a long day of hiking in the heat. Her shirt and shorts were damp with sweat, so she set up her tent and changed into her sleep clothes. She laid her sweaty hiking clothes on top of her tent to dry overnight. During the night, she heard drops of rain and immediately sat up to unzip her tent to retrieve her clothes but it was too late. The next morning, she had to put on her sopping wet shirt and shorts back on. Sleeping clothes are kept sacred and are, for on and are only for sleeping, she said, so I had to put on my wet clothes. Imagine going from warm, dry jammies to a cold, wet shirt on your back. That was tough. Gibson faced the, Can Gibson faced the Canada's wildfire smoke and Vermont's historic flooding. She walked in rain or with wet feet for days. After Vermont's governor declared a state of emergency, there were a few instances when Gibson walked along the road around crossings due to raging water. She only saw two black bears who ran when they saw her. Gibson did encounter something she was most fearful of, rattlesnakes. On May 10th, she was hiking near Tinker Cliffs in Virginia when she heard a loud rattle. The noise was so loud it immediately startled her. She gasped and stumbled backward, only to realize a timber rattlesnake was coiled up beside her foot. My adrenaline immediately started pumping, and I involuntarily started to cry, she said. Fortunately, Gibson was able to pass by the docile snake with no further confrontations. Gibson was a bit braver when she encountered two other rattlesnakes later during her hike in Pennsylvania. Despite many challenges, Gibson had many positive experiences. One was the trail community, which she described as, unlike anything I have ever experienced. It is a melting pot of people, diversity of ages, genders, careers, experiences, incomes, families, and personalities. Everyone on trail is working toward a common goal, 
and everyone is cheering each other on, she explained. Though you don't previously know these hundreds of people you come across, we are all a family and looked out for each other. I never felt unsafe on the trail. Gibson described the trail community as what everyone should strive to be. She said, the trail community is generous. The trail community is kind. The trail community is inclusive. The people in the trail community are past hikers and their families, current hikers and their families, friends of said people, people interested in hiking, people in the trail towns that we passed, strangers, and many more. To be part of the trail community is to be part of a giant family. Gibson felt blessed and received much generosity beyond anything she could have imagined. The trail community calls the people who help hikers trail angels. One example of generosity experienced along the trail is trail magic. This term describes many forms of kindness along the way, from people sporadically setting up food or refreshments, coolers with treats, rides to or from town, or places to stay, and much more. Trail magic never lost its luster, said Gibson. It was like Christmas morning every time I was surprised with it. Complete strangers rally around hikers out of the goodness of their hearts. Along the way, Gibson hiked with hundreds of people. A fun aspect of hiking the trail was getting a trail name. You no longer go by your government name once giving a trail name, said Gibson. A trail name is like a nickname. It is given or earned while on trail. This name usually originates from something a hiker does on trail, a funny experience, a hiker's personality, and so on. Gibson's friends, Radish and Sapling, brainstormed possibilities for her trail name before they gifted her with North Star, because she was helpful and always had a bright smile. So, from Franklin, North Carolina on, Gibson was known as North Star to everyone she met. She met many interesting people with fascinating stories along the way including Tent Peg, Stairmaster, Billy Goat, Jukebox, Squirrel, Frostbite, Burrito, Long John Silver, S'mores, Nope, and Ricola. Before her trek, Gibson thought of herself as a confident person, but after her experience, she has gained a whole new level of confidence. One of my daily affirmations is, I can do hard things, she said. By accomplishing this through hike, I truly feel as if I can do anything I set my mind to. Gibbs, Gibson's biggest takeaway from her five month hike is knowing that she's happy to live simply. I was content in the woods when I had food, water, shelter, and good company, she said. In addition to simplicity, her faith flourished. Not only did my connection with God grow, but I was able to spread the message to others around me. After returning home, Gibson dealt with post-trail depression because the transition from trail to regular life was almost immediate when she started a new school year. I miss the simplicity of the trail and I miss my trail friends, she said. I hope to plan a new adventure soon. Along the way, Gibson hiked with hundreds of people. She keeps in contact with many of them through text and social media. She gained friends from all over the United States, Canada, Belgium, Ireland, and South Africa. Her friend Puff is from Australia. Another friend is Rob Weisberg, nicknamed Sleepwalker, who was a firefighter from New York when the Twin Towers were attacked. He helped to recover bodies from the wreckage from September 11, 2001 to May 2002. His trail name was Sleepwalker because he didn't sleep normally for 12 years after that, said Gibson. During her trek, Gibson's faith in humanity and God strengthened because of many moments. One specific instance was her last day on the trail. Gibson and Stairmaster's Summit Day started out with gorgeous weather, plenty of sunshine and perfect temperatures for hiking. They just ascended above tree line onto a rock scramble when it started to rain. Both hoped the rain would soon pass, but it didn't. The sky turned dark, the wind became stronger, and it started hailing. The rain persisted, so Gibson and Stairmaster found a small crawl space to take shelter in an otherwise exposed rock field. At this point, Gibson could not imagine turning back after all of her effort to get her to that exact spot. It was 2 p.m. on the mountain, and she was shivering and feeling beaten down. So she messaged her mom, Lisa, through her Garmin GPS tracker and asked her to do something very important. Pray. I told her to pray to God that the weather would get better so we could summit, said Gibson. 
Lisa's response to her daughter's message was simple yet powerful. She immediately dropped to her knees and prayed. In that instant, the wind blew the clouds away and a blue sky appeared, said Gibson. Stairmaster and I cried. There was no denying the coincidence of that moment. The pair summited Mount Katahdin in Maine at around 4 p.m. on August 11, 2023. Seeing the Katahdin sign was so rewarding, said Gibson. My eyes filled, filled with tears and my heart was filled with pride as I got my first glimpse of the sign. She said it was at this moment that all of my hard work, all of the long days, all of the pain, and all of the steps were worth it. The pair's ascension, ascension was much later than expected, and now they were faced with quickly descending before dark. Their plan was to hike back down to get a ride to Bangor, Maine, where Gibson would fly home the next day. But their anxiety increased dramatically when the two got to the gravel road and discovered all the hikers had left. There was no one traveling the backcountry road. In yet another moment of desperation, Gibson prayed out loud, Dear God, please send us someone who can give us a ride to the ranger station. And if it's not too much to ask, a ride to Millinocket. Barely 10 seconds later, a brand new white Tesla drove down the deserted road. I am standing there in disbelief with my thumb out to hitch a ride, said Gibson. She and Stairmaster get in the car and explain their predicament to the female driver and how they prayed for a ride. She told them of how she was on her way to the ranger station to pick up her husband and how they would then be driving to Millinocket. Stairmaster and I locked eyes as our jaws dropped, said Gibson. I said to him, do you believe now? Because it was such a beautiful moment to bring him back to his faith and it was a perfect ending to our hike together. Gibson's through hike took five months to hike 2,198.4 miles of the Appalachian Trail. She expressed her appreciation to her family, friends, and partner Joe for all the support she received while on trail. She thanked the community who rallied around her and showered her with words of encouragement day after day. Gibson's through hike is documented on her YouTube channel, Audrey on the AT. I hope that I inspire someone reading or watching to go after a dream they'd like to chase. Gibson wanted to quit many times. She faced adversity, obstacles, and setbacks, yet she persisted and made progress to finally arrive at her destination months later. Despite difficulties, she prayed and persevered. Her dream became a reality. In her five months along the trail, Gibson realized that courage isn't always a loud and assertive voice. Instead, it's sometimes a quiet yet persistent voice saying, try again tomorrow. And that's what Gibson did, day after day for months. Her hard work and determination paid off. She accomplished a dream she had years earlier because she refused to give up.